Shalom, who praises to you. I will have Barsham, Yahweh, Barsham, Harakar, Kudash, double honors unto the apostles and elders of great most honorable well. Shalom to the hopeful elect. This is Paya Allah coming back at you again with another epistle. Um, I don't have a, na a title for this video as as of now will be Lord willing determined upon upload. Um, but basically, I want to. I saw a brother upload a video, and um, I believe he was dealing with um, something like you can get this mark or that mark. I'm not too sure, but I just literally saw the title and it got my, you know, the spirit got into, you know, into gear and just had me meditate and, and thinking upon something. And really, you know, based upon what I took from the title that I saw, there is, is there's, there's, there's two ways this can go, man. All right. It's basically the left hand or the right. All right. And the left is the RFID chip and on the right is Yahweh Shai, the right, through the word, okay, so the Bible. So, ultimately, the choice isn't yours, you know, we know that there's no such thing as free will. This is all done through the spirit. Everything's predestined, predestined. we're just walking in footsteps that have to be filled, basically. And we, we pray and hope that our lot be of a righteous lot and that um, we make it up out of it and be, being being one of the elect of, of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel who today are scattered all over the earth, the four corners of the earth and are known as the so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans and also their descendants who are scattered all over the whole earth. But um, the point being is that Life and death is presented before you. In the left hand, you have the RFID chip. In the right, you have the word, the right, the spirit, a spiritual mark, okay? So uh, without further ado, I'm going to get into the lesson and Lord willing you be edified. So it's Deuteronomy 30 and 19, and it reads, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, all right? And that's all, that's the point I want to read on, all right? So let me read, and this is dealing with Moses, right? What, what was he presenting? The word, okay? The word was presented before the people, the law, statutes, and commandments. And when you go to the, this Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it basically speaks of the life and the death. The life is the blessing, in following the Lord of the word of Yahweh Barsham El Shai. But then the death is a cursing in going against the word of Yahweh Barsham El Shai. As he tells you in Surah the thirty third chapter, that good is said against evil, life against death, the righteous against the wicked. Alright. That's that's the story that we're in. There's only two paths. Even though it seems like there's a myriad of of paths to walk. There's only one righteous. It tells you, um, Yahusha said it straight as a gate that leadeth unto life. Lucy paraphrasing, but broad is a way that lead unto death. All right. So many there be that go into the way of death, basically. But for for, for you to find the righteous way, is is few and far between that manage to find that way. All right. And you know. Basically, going against the righteous way is death, basically. All right? It tells you in the book of First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, that the sting of um, the law is death. Um, let me read it quickly. Cause, um, I shall go a precept for that and then one to this and then one to follow up with afterwards. So this is First Corinthians 15 and 56. So it says, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. All right. So the sting of death is sin. But what what is sin? Sin is basically going against the law. So if you go against the law, basically, the end there be, the end of that is death. All right. Now next is um. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, 
But the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, our Lord. All right. So basically, the wages of sin is death. So it's reiter Paul's reiterating the same thing he said in the book of First Corinthians. But he goes on to say, but the gift of Yahweh is the eternal life through Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, our Lord. But he also gives the remedy unto life. All right. Whereby Moses presented the two before you. Now it's being presented the grace by Yahweh Shai to basically give us the way into life. Okay? And it's only for the elect on this side, but on the other side, it's for the whole nation of Israel through um the elect basically. Alright? But in in saying that this this whole battle of good and evil is manifest into a a proving, a great proving at that. All right, and um, this is really gonna separate, you know, the Lord's chosen from the Lord's um, from those that are not chosen of the Lord. All right, so this is Ezekiel nine and four, and the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. I'm gonna read it again. So it says, And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the sea, through the midst of Jerusalem. All right. And this is happening right now. All right. With the elect. All right. We're in the midst of the city, the midst of Jerusalem, because Jerusalem, your Yer Shalom, all right, city of peace, is a, is, a, is a people before it's a place. All right. The place was named for the people's sake. All right, so through the midst of Jerusalem, the nation of Israel, so called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and all their descendants, through the midst and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So there's angels that are basically putting on marks of exemption, all right, because when you look up that word mark there in the Hebrew. The word there is for war, which means mark of exemption. And that's what the angel's putting on the void. When you read um, Revelations um, 14 and 1, it tells you about a mark being in the foreheads of the elect men of the nation, in the 144,000 elect men of the nation of Israel, right? But it's also mentioned in the chapter of Revelation prior of the mark of the beast, okay? which them that worship and praise the beast would receive a mark. So there's basically two forms of elect, basically. They elect for the wicked and they elect for the righteous, right? But at the end of the day, the righteous is going to win, right? But this is the proving period. That, that will be the, the ultimate proving period to separate who's chosen, who's the elect from who's not chosen, all right? So it says... um. Verse 5, and to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the, the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Right? And those men, ultimately, and he have elect women, but they starting with the men, 144,000 of, of the nation of Israel, they're going to be safeguarded in that time, right? So, again, the, the flavor of the week last um, was, um, before was um, about, will the elect receive, take the mark of the beast? And the answer is no, because they got the mark of exemption. They're not going to receive it, right? That's not their lot, okay? But come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house, right? So ultimately with that mark, anyone that has anyone that's exempt from that mark, what's gonna to happen to them? They're gonna be beamed up into the chariots of Israel and beamed up into the chariots of well, to the father's ship and meet Yahweh Shai there, okay, and watch the destruction fall upon the earth as it tells you in the book of Psalms, all right. Well, they'll basically see it on their right hand and on their, le on their left hand side, all right? And in seeing that, 
um, Revelations 14, 9 and 10 is going to come into effect, basically, where the lake of fire and every every everyone that basically has a mark is going to be cast into there. Everyone that's wicked. All right. So I'm going to finish on this scripture. <clears throat> This is second Ezra six and seven. Then answered I and said, What shall be the part in asunder of the times? Or when shall it be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Alright? So this is Ezra speaking with the angel and basically wanting to know, desiring to know when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth. Alright? And basically, you know, when ultimately saying when we're gonna go into the kingdom, right? So verse eight it says, and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, from Jacob and Esau were born of him. Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, right? So basically, what happened was a figure of things to come, when Esau was first born. Meaning that that was the beginning, all right, of wicked. Well, basically dealing with this time we're in now, in terms of not the beginning, but the time of wickedness that precede that um, came before the time of the righteous, all right, which was Jacob, all right, being the righteous time to come after. So I'll read again: Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world. All right, because Esau is the end. His his rulership is the end of the world, and it tells you that because uh, uh, First Maccabees one and seven to nine, basically talks about Alexander reigning twelve years and then dying, then his men taking up, you know, rulership in his stead, and then evils multiplying upon the earth, because that was the beginning of of the the reign of the wicked, basically the beginning of the end of the world. All right, and um. It says, and, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Because, so, let me dwell on that point that they came into power. So now we're still in that reign. All right? That's why Job 9.24 tells you that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. All right? But guess what? This reign of terror is going to come to an end, an abrupt end. Okay? Because it says, Jacob is the beginning of the world that followeth. So, there's key prophecies to play out. As I aforementioned, about the mark of the beast, all right. That's the the, the key prophecy to play out. World War Three to follow right up after that, and then the return of Yahweh Shai, all right. After America's destroyed, after the beginning of World War Three, basically, all right. So, you know, in saying that, ultimately, when America's destroyed and Yahweh Shai comes back, that's when the nation of Israel will be delivered, and Jacob. Will basically, you know, be the beginning of it that followeth a righteous kingdom where and dwell dwelleth righteousness. So with that, I pray you're edified. I say shalom.